Hey everybody, Sam here from Pickup Goliath. Welcome to this series of tutorials where I'm gonna take an extract of this track and I'm gonna work you all the way through the process from getting it into my door, through all of my mix preparation choices, how I structure my mix session. Uh, I'm gonna be taking you through EQ, through my compression, through all of my effects, my panning. Uh, I'm gonna be mixing it properly and then I'm gonna master it in the session as well. Um, so come on this journey with me, it's gonna take us some time, I'm gonna split it up into a number of sessions, uh, but let's get to it. So here I am, I've got my project up and open, and I've imported this session uh, into my project. The session was delivered to me at 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, so that's what I got my project set up as, uh, and the tempo of the track is 85 BPM, so I've got that all set up ready in my project. Now the first thing you'll notice is that actually when I just pull these tracks straight in, um, it's not really very helpfully labeled, right? Everything's got these numbers on the tracks and it's not very clear. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do before I even listen to anything, right? Uh, or before I even figure out what's going on here, is I'm just gonna go through and do a bit of housekeeping and start labeling some of this stuff up in a logical and helpful way, right? So. Uh, track one here, this is kick, so I'm just going to label it as kick, and this is kick sub, and this is my snare top, and this is my snare bottom. So I'll go through and I'll label the rest of my tracks, be right back. Cool, right, so I've gone through and I've labelled, and now I know what I'm working on, I know what's in my project. I know I've got a kick in and kick out, snare top, snare bottom, one tom, overheads, two sets of uh, room mics, I've got a mono, and I've got a stereo. Uh, then I've got just the bass DI channel, and then I've got three guitars. So I've got two mics on each guitar and a DI on guitar one, two, three, and four. I've got a lead vocal with a double track and two BVs, right? So from that, what I can actually start to assess is um, whether or not some of these are going to be stereo or mono track. So if I flip open my mixer, I can just make sure that Logic's done the sensible thing and changed my tracks that need to be stereo to stereo and those that need to be mono to mono. And very helpfully it's done that for me. So my overheads here are in stereo and my room stereo is in stereo, but everything else is in mono. Whilst I've got my mixer open, I'm not gonna be recording anything into this session. So just to safeguard myself, I'm gonna go and take the input off of every channel. So I'm not gonna risk ever recording anything into this session. I don't need any input selected for the time being. Beautiful. Uh, now, because I'm a little bit pedantic, I like to have things uh, all nicely labelled. So I'm going to select all of my regions here and I'm going to name all the regions by track so that the names that I've just put on my tracks go onto my regions. Beautiful. Um, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting some of these things into buses straight away. I want to start getting myself organised into subgroups. Okay. So all of my drums, for example, here, all of my drum tracks, I'm going to put into a track stack. So here's my track stack, I wanna make sure it's a summing stack, and I'm gonna hit create. I can, I can label that straight away as my drums, right? That is my drums track stack. My bass, even though there's just one channel at the moment, I'm gonna create a track stack for that too. So here is my bass, because you never know, I might make a new, maybe an aux send or something, that I then wanna root into that track stack. Uh, my guitars, let's just get these out of the way for a second. My guitars, okay, I've got 12 guitar channels. For the time being, let's put all of them in one track stack. Similarly, my lead vocals, let's have a track stack for my lead vocals. And I'm also gonna have a track stack for my BVs. Beautiful. What that does is it facilitates me being able to work in a much cleaner way. Now I'm effectively mixing five buses, right? My drums, my bass, my guitar, my lead and my BVs, which is so much more straightforward in terms of what I'm looking at. And what it means is if I need to mute all the guitars, right, I can just mute the guitars rather than having to go in and go, right, oh, okay, I wanna mute all the guitars, let's mute them all there, which is a pain. The next thing that I do, because I'm really pedantic and I like things to be nice and organized, is that I like to go through and give everything pictures. I like things to be easily navigatable. So I'll go through and find my drums and I'll put the drum kit on the drum channel. And I'll go through and find the kick and I'll put the kick on the kick channel. So I'll go through and do the rest of those pictures offline. 
All right, cool. So I've done that. I've got all my drums. They've got some nice pictures on them for kick, snare, tom, overheads, etc. My bass is there. I've got guitars. I've got my lead vocals. I had a sneaky listen to see what uh, the vocalist was, and it's a female, so that's great. And I've got these BVs, and I get put these little sort of choir icons on the BVs. Beautiful. The next thing that I like to do, again, to help my organization, and this is all to make it easier to navigate and work through and around, is I like to put colors on things because colors indicate to me where things are in my mix. So I like to um, choose sort of subsets of colors, right? So my drums, for example, I'll make them all one color, but I'll leave the bus as the brightest color, and then everything within that bus or track stack, I'll put the next tone down, right? Bass, the same. So I like to go with a yellow for a bass, and then I'll put whatever's in that stack the next tone down. Guitars, the same. I like to go with a green for guitars, but whatever's in that stack, next tone down. I'll do the vocals offline. Cool, so there we go. I'm all nicely colored up, I'm all nicely labeled, and you guessed it, I'm also going to color these regions by track so that they're the colors of my tracks. It just helps me to work around and be sort of really nicely organized and know where I'm going. Nice. Uh, the last sort of immediate thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create myself an extra uh, level of mixing, if you like. So rather than having all of these buses going straight to my stereo out, I like to have an additional sort of um, uh, channel before my stereo out, if you like, as a mix bus. So I'm going to change all of the outputs of these buses to the last bus in my series there and it will create this channel for me, which I'm gonna call my mix bus. I will go and uh, make it the same, almost the same color as my stereo out, one tone down. And then I'm going to right click on that and create track so that it puts that ch uh, channel into my uh, mix session for me right there. And I'm gonna go and put a little fader icon on it right there. Beautiful. So now I feel like I'm in a pretty good place. I'm prepped up, ready to go. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an initial gain stage on this whole project, right? Now gain staging is a big topic. Lots of people talk about it and they go, oh, I don't know what it is, what is gain staging? Gain staging is a pretty simple concept which lots of people get wrong. Um, it's just about making sure that all of the levels that you're working with in your project are at a sensible, healthy level, not too hot, not too cold, uh, but a manageable level. The reason that you gain stage is to make sure that the signal you're putting through the plugins that you're gonna to add to this project is at an optimum level for those plugins, right? Loads of plugins are uh, analog emulations. They're emulating old school analog hardware gear. Um, and that particular hardware, generally speaking, uh, is optimized for a particular level coming through it. Now, people tend to talk about minus 18 dB peak as the level level to make sure you're gain staging two, which is a sort of an optimum level, um, which is great, work to that. Personally, I like to work to minus 14 dB peak um, because I like that extra little bit uh, of signal coming through my plugins, but anywhere between minus 18 to minus 14 dB is absolutely fine. Now, um, Here's a really good trick for you. If you haven't got this set up in your project, go and do it. This little icon here is your pre-fader metering icon. If it doesn't appear in your session already, just right click up here, go customize control bar and display, and it's in your menu here on the right hand side. You want pre-fader metering, and that's gonna turn that option on in your uh, actual session. Now pre-fader metering, if you look at your actual, the arrangement of your um, faders on your mixers, it's gonna swap the position of the fader and the meter, okay? So at the moment with it off, your metering is effectively post fader. What that means is whatever you do on the fader will directly impact on what you're seeing on the meter, um, which is fine whilst you're just sort of uh, working through your project, through your session. Actually, when we get to the sort of mixing stage of a session, once we're all tracked, pre-fader metering is much more helpful for our gain staging. What it's gonna do is to swap or flip the odd order of the fader and the meter like so, which means that it's metering before you're getting to the fader. 
that really helps you in terms of your gain staging because it means that you're able to uh, continually keep a track of the, the actual level of the signal before your mix moves on your fader, which is a really useful thing. So pre-fader metering, get it on in your session. Now, in order to set your levels for your project, Logic actually has a really useful workaround, a really useful hack, right? Um, and it's called normalizing region gain. So what I can do is I can just select all of the regions in this project. I'm just gonna do the drums first of all as an uh, illustrative point. Hit functions up here and you're looking for the normalize region gain uh, option, shift, uh, shift option G if you want a shortcut. And then you've got a number of options here within this menu that pops up. Now, you're looking to affect individual regions, right? In this case, I could do individual tracks because I haven't separated anything up into regions, but individual regions. And then I want to make sure that the algorithm is set to peak. So it's looking to normalize peak values rather than loudness. And then I can set my target level here to the level that I want it to basically find uh, as my pre-fader metering level. So I'm gonna set it to the minus 14 that I want it to work, uh, work towards, hit apply, and then it's gonna change all of those regions so that the peak level of all of those regions is minus 14. And what I can do if I then, I'll solo the drums and play that section is we should see that the peak level on all of these channels here shouldn't go above or certainly not much beyond minus 14. Let's have a quick look. So you can see straight away, okay, so my kick is going to minus 13.9, point 0.1 of a dB over that target. Uh, so is my tom, so is my, but you know, within like a very small margin of error, it's giving us straight away that pre-fader metering level that we're targeting, which is just super helpful, right? So let me quickly just apply that to the rest of my mix. Let's grab all these other regions. Let's go to my normalized region gain. There's my minus 14 dB target. And there we go. Let's hit that. And what we'll, what we'll have found, let's just make sure that it's done it all uh, the way that we want it. Yeah, we're all good. So everything is now set up uh, to be at the target level that we want. So we've effectively gain staged our project initially straight away. Now you're probably saying, yeah, but hang on a second, Sam, because now that looks really small in the waveform. Yeah, it does, but it's a simple fix, right? All we need to do is go up, grab this little icon here, which is the waveform zoom. If you click and hold, you can then make that waveform larger so you can see more clearly what you're working with, right? No problem there whatsoever. How about that? Beautiful. So now I feel like I'm in a great place to start getting to grips with this project and what's in it and start having a listen and figuring out what I'm gonna do to make this sound great. So hit like and follow and uh, make sure that you're coming back for the next little part in this mix session. I'll see you in the next one.